It is our first in-person face-to-face field exchange event. And I think just for that, we need a round of applause. Um, I really just want to take a moment to honor the founder. I don't want to get emotional. This is a really big thing. This is massive. So Stacey, this is all your hard work. I know you always say it's teamwork, but well done. Congratulations on this awesome, awesome milestones, the start of so many other in-person um, get-togethers. And so if you haven't heard about Field Exchange, it's obviously a winning empowerment network of like-minded women from all sorts of life supporting and looking for one another. And with that, really excited for today. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have Mal Cock, who is a journalist and a digital editor, and she is a collaborator as well as a member of Field Exchange. So we're here to hopefully learn and when we leave, we'll know exactly what our purpose is, who we are. And so we're very, very excited to have you, Mal, and we look forward to learning from you. And over to you. Yay, and, thank oh, you. And so in some house rules, the bathroom, through the doors, out the doors, to the left. To opposite the left. The glass, but it is in fact the truth. You've got yeah. to yeah. discuss it. Yeah. Um, everybody online, um, you're welcome to pop questions into the chat. I'll let Mal know if there are any when Mal's ready for that. Awesome. And thanks to you. Cool. Hi, everybody. Um, how many people do we have joining us online? Stacey, do you we know? Now, we're now 10 in total. 10 online and two, four, six. Not including us in person. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. Um, like Joe said, I'm Mal. I'm a journalist and digital editor. I am so excited to be here. It's kind of weird like having this uh, online in-person thing, but I'll, I'll try and make eye contact with everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, so like I said, I'm excited to be here. I'm so grateful to Stacey for asking me to do this. It's my passion um, to help. I have a couple of friends here who will attest to me always trying to career coach them. Um, so it's really just my passion to be here and to help everybody just kind of find their gift and enjoy working again you know um like i'm trying to do so i'm very much showing up as myself uh no makeup because i ain't about that thank you guys for everyone who can see um the stretch is as dressed up as i like to be <laughs> thanks for, for lending it to me Bruno. um cool so i'm going to switch over now i just wanted everyone to kind of put a face to um, my voice but um, can, can you pop a, a yes if you can hear me okay into the chat for all the people that are online or thumbs up, or thumbs up whatever yes Jim's iPad says yes <laughs> this is like cool okay cool awesome so I'm going to share my screen and then just start the uh, presentation cool how do I? Oh, sorry, guys. Um, how do I take this far away? Because it's full screen, right? Yeah. Where's that button? It is presenting. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, do you know? what you want to do with your life. I think if the answer to that was yes, like you guys wouldn't be here today, I don't think. Um, but just, I just want to kind of split the room. So weird, like online person <laughs> split the room virtual as well. Um, and kind of get a sense of who has some idea of what they want to do. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I got one hand up here. Um, if you can just, this, I'm going to ask another question, um, and then for everyone online, if you can just pop a one, if your, your answer is the first question that I just asked. Um, the other one is, you have no idea what you want to do, you just know it's not what you're currently doing. Whoa. So if you... <laughs> so if your answer is the first one, um, just, get, just to get an idea, everyone in the room, can you raise your hand? I know, Robin, you kind of have an idea. Yeah. You have an idea? Okay. And for those who have no idea what they want to do, they just know it's not what they're doing now. If that's you, pop it number two into the, the um, chat. And Joe, you can just give me an idea of who's number one, who's number two. Number one. Mm -hmm. Stacey's number one. Lauren Smith is number one. 
ko dani the get the bus with number 2 cool. three, one, then one, two. okay awesome 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 three, three just say again three. Three, one, and four, now four. yeah so just one, two. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. So everyone kind of has a, a general sense of what they enjoy doing. That's a, I mean, that's a good start, guys. I just wanted to see where I want to get a temperature of self-awareness. Um, so let's jump to the, um, <laughs> I'll explain all these things later. Let's jump to the homework. I just wanted to share just to kind of ice break um, what my mom had to say about me so you guys feel comfortable sharing. And then I wanted to get an idea if anyone's comfortable to share or did the homework. What did your mom say about you? If you're online, share maybe one or two things and Joe will let me know what it is. And does anybody in the room wanna feel comfortable? What your mom say about you? <laughs> no worries. Um, okay, cool. So I'll just cover mine so long and I'll give everyone online some time to just pop an answer or two in. Um, this is a very interesting call to my mom. So bossy, lazy when it comes to chores or cleaning. Yeah, uh, like to read a lot. Uh, could watch TV all, all day and didn't like being told what to do. I can kind of check the same boxes, more or less. Um, I haven't changed much at all, which I suppose is a good thing, but I don't think any of us really do change who we are inherently, which is why I wanted to do this exercise because I'm not sure if it was mentioned in the email, but the reason I want to know what you what you guys were like when you were kids is because um, the older we get, the more self-conscious we become uh, and we kind of acclimatize to our peer groups, like at school, whoever we're hanging out with, our parents, whoever we're close to it's in us to become more like whoever's around us because we want to feel accepted. So if we grow up in a household where we don't feel accepted for who we are, it's very difficult to go into a school environment and then stay true to the things that essentially make us different to other people, which is our essence. It's our specialness, you know? So I just wanted um, to do this exercise because I want all of us to kind of reconnect to that authentic self you know who we were before the world told us who we should be because that has a lot to do with um what we should be doing now it seems very far off you know five-year-old me to 35 whoever year old um me to be like okay let's join those two and figure out you know because you're like i'm a kid but that kid when you were a kid you were your most honest self and i think what we've forgotten how to do in today's age is to look at ourselves and just kind of pull out from ourselves, our honest selves into what it is we want to do. It's a mistake that I made myself as well. Um, just to give you, if you don't know yet, a little bit about my career chopping change history. Um, I studied art direction at design at AAA. Um, that decision was made from a movie I watched in grade nine. <laughs> <laughs> very much based on what that could look like from the outside. Mal Gibson, Helen Hunt, all they did was they showed up to work, he showed up late every day. They just basically came up with ideas to sell stuff and that was their job. And they had like this lavish lifestyle, um, lived in these awesome New York, you know, apartments and whatever. And I was like, cool, I can do that. I can come up with ideas. I'm like, I'm gonna do that. Uh, went to college, hated it. Well, not hated it, but th there wasn't much motivation. You know, I always um, got compliments on my art, my, my artistic abilities. So I thought I should be a creative. This is what I should do. And I'm like coming up with ideas. That's great. That's what I'm going to do. Studied for three years. I couldn't get that motivation, that excitement about my work that I saw my peers had. Um, and eventually in my third year, I had some existential crisis that made me wake up to the fact that actually this is not what I want to do. Like I have to just be honest with myself and go back to my mom and be like, listen, <laughs> sorry, mom. Um, I want to do something else. Took a bit of a gap year, did a lot of uh, reading, which is my superpower. I read a lot. I like, I just consume information, a lot of self-help stuff and 
it just like it overflows out to me. I just want to share it with everybody. That's like just what I want to do. Um, yeah, so I did a lot of reading. I went back to work at the bookshop that I was working at during college, um, and I felt very embarrassed to be there. And the reason I bring this up is because we feel so much pressure to figure out who we need to be and what we we need to know what we, we must do. You know, you go to school, you pick your subjects, you, you know, we're not given a space to kind of play around and explore and experiment and try different things. As soon as you're in that space, it feel, like you feel self-conscious. You feel like you feel bad for not having it all together. And if you think about the way that we were schooled and brought up, we've never been given a space to kind of figure this out, to get it all together. So I'm very much a proponent of a gap year, which is essentially what I took after college. I would have preferred if it was before. Um, so, you know, so, um, but uh, that said, nothing is wasted. Um, so yeah, so it was very bad to be back at the bookshop. Whenever somebody that I studied with came into the store, I would uh, hide in the back and my colleagues were not impressed with, with this move. Um, but yeah, kind of did some introspection, went into sales, uh, just tried to figure myself out because after you finish something where all of your peers are going to go and study and you are suddenly realizing this is not for you, it's like, where am I supposed to go now? You know, um, so I just tried a couple of different things, went into sales, became a financial advisor, did it for a year, was good at it, got some awards, but hated it. And I decided I wanted to go into fashion. Um, and you're going to see the person who kind of inspired this uh, decision later in the presentation. Um, but yeah, it was another incident of looking at somebody else's success and wanting that for myself. But the mistake that I made was that was her thing. She was successful and she looked happy and vibrant and energized because she was doing her thing. That wasn't my thing. And as soon as I did it, I realized, number one, I hate sewing. Number two... I couldn't be bothered to plan an outfit. Like I'm a jeans and t-shirt girl, tackies, I'll buy one pair of tackies, I'll wear it all year. That's, that's just how I'm wired. I don't like makeup, it's not my vibe. And um, I think that was an important lesson. Cool. Um, sorry, did I just skip a slide? No, I didn't. Okay, so the reason I'm talking about what we like to do as children is because I'd really like to find out um, what you guys like to do as children. And I see like not many hands went up over here. So <laughs> um, in terms of the homework, I want to know, uh, Joanne, did anybody in the, the comments respond? And give, give me a couple of examples of what people like to do as kids. Okay, so um, I'm not going to do one thing again. No, you don't have to give the so names, just examples. Enjoy playing with sand and clearing. Some of them was lazy and tedious. Lazy to serious. Someone was riding, like mm -hmm. horse riding, quiet, introverted, did not enjoy fighting, up toys, games, puzzles. You love chairs, people walk for the chair with you. Another song, okay. love reading. Then someone else says, I stood my ground and protected my siblings. Because nice. Because sharing my things. Someone else says, what my mom had to say, I love reading, described and determined, and get strong, get us like shopping, and love being outside. Then, um, There's another one that says, um, they like spending, they, they father said they like spending time with him um, all the time. I just wanted to be involved in everything. I was always right. Um, and that close friends actually shared with me that I always wanted to be, always wanted to make my own rules. And then the last two is um, introvert just means you are sensitive to his energy and not brain more easily. We'll be charging over to others. I'm a proud mm. introvert. Lovely. Um, I'm also a proud introvert or an ambivert, actually. That's a thing. Like, I'm okay around other people, but I get trained quickly around other people, and I like to spend time alone just to recharge. Um, so it's good that whoever that person was knows that about themselves. Um, so the reason I'm doing this exercise also, and I included what did you like to do as a child, um, is because the thing that you're meant to do, your gift, um, or your purpose in life, your 40 hours a week or however many hours you decide to work, you need to enjoy doing that, you know, 
to get some type of meaning out of your life because women especially are wired to work for purpose. If we're not getting or feeling like there's any purpose to what we're doing, we get drained, we get burnt out. And this is what happened to me. I was using my gift, but I was using it to do the wrong thing. Um, and this is where your gift and your, your purpose align. So your gift is something that you won't recognize in yourself. Um, it's something that comes so naturally to you that you think everybody else can also do it, which is what happened to me. Okay, so there's a little bit more investigative work that needs to happen after this um, program, but what we're going to do now is kind of get motivated to do the work. Um, and the reason, uh, and the way we're going to do that is an exercise called 100 Things, which is something I do um, regularly, and I can see Bronwyn uh, nodding in the back there because it's something I've done with my friends a couple of times. Um, and it's such a powerful exercise. Um, basically, what, let me just go, before I get there, I'm jumping ahead, it's what I like to do. Um, so the things we like to do, let me just come back to that quickly. Social media has basically made anything that you want to do possible. This is not high school anymore, we need to take these three subjects to get into a university and then get that degree before you do whatever else which I can attest to because I didn't study writing, I just did it and I got work. So I've proven the system wrong. Um, yeah, so I just want to show you a couple examples of things that people like doing that they've become really good at. And hopefully one of your interests are in here. Okay. Um, so I told you I don't like sewing. Why is my thing not clicking? Here we go. You like sewing? I don't know if you guys know about Fiance Knowles. She is like a fine art embroiderer. Okay. She makes a living sewing pictures. This is an example of some of her work. Um, dog, she just embroidered Snoop Dogg's face onto a bandana of dogs that she had. <laughs> Guys, I just want to let you know, she makes money from this, like a lot of money, okay? Um, what about painting for ants? This is Lorraine Luce, and she basically paints tiny pictures and makes money from painting tiny pictures. I just want to show you this. I'm just pausing in between as well because I want you to keep thinking about what it is that you most enjoy doing. It might be different from what you used to do as a child, but think about what you love spending your time doing, what you get energized by. And I'm just showing you this. And while you're seeing this, I want you to start realizing how possible anything that you want to do is. Because what social media is doing is it's taking the establishment away. You don't need to, if you want to be a writer, apply to a magazine anymore. In any case, they're all closing down. So <laughs> if that's your career plan, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but also I'm excited for you because there are no longer any gatekeepers to whatever it is you want to do. You want to be an actress, YouTube. You want to uh, be an artist, Instagram. Like whatever it is you want to do, the gatekeepers are now gone. Okay. Doodling. This is my friend Lauren. She likes to doodle with found objects. And she's now started a um, t-shirt line. I'm just going to leave this here because you guys need to kind of zoom in and just uh, take note of what, what she actually does. She just takes objects and you see, yeah. So there's like a little computer wire. Yeah. I'm actually not sure. I think that's just a doodle. It's just a normal doodle. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. A measuring tape cupcake. These are hair pins. Yeah. This is a little comb, yeah. So that's all she does. If you go onto this, um, onto her Instagram, it's blogroffer, at blogroffer. Uh, you can see all the little things that she's done. And I mean, yeah, you can see she's got a little campaign going. 
um, and a t-shirt line. So doodling guys, people are making a career out of doodling. And then um, this is the chick that inspired me to go into fashion because I saw she started a blog, couldn't write as well as me. And I also want you guys to pay attention to who you are jealous of and who makes you angry online. Okay, because, <laughs> <laughs> because and I've had this discussion with one of my friends before, um, your jealousy sometimes is an indicator of I could be doing that. And it's not actually about the other person, it's more a frustration with self that you're not doing what you know you could be doing or should be doing. And then seeing somebody else do it is upsetting. So just pay attention to those feelings. Um, so I saw her start a blog. Her name is Just Jade. And uh, she was a friend of mine. Like I know her from back in the day, you know, and she started this blog and she asked me for advice. And I was like, cool, she asked me, that's so sweet. She asked me for advice. And I thought this was going to be like a little blog of hers, you know. And then she started blogging and she got an award and I was reading her things and I'm like, that's spelling mistakes here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I could I could totally do that. Um, and luckily I did because that's how my writing career started. But um, if you want to be a fashion blogger on a, but you're on a Mr. Price budget, she literally started taking pictures of her Mr. Price outfits and it blew up from there. So she started with economical, affordable budget fashion. So don't like, don't also think when we see these fashion Instagrams on, online, we're seeing them at the peak of their success. Yeah. We're not seeing them at the beginning. So don't be afraid of your small beginnings or of just starting. So this is her now. She obviously progressed from a surprise on another <laughs> level now, you know. Cool. Maybe you can do a decent accent and you also like poking fun at stereotypes. I don't know how many of you know Julia Anastasopoulos. That Greek surname? Yeah. Okay. What you said, yeah? That thing. Maybe you don't know her, but maybe you know one of her characters. And also, so this is Afrikaner Tani who likes to craft. And then it's the, the rich Joburg lady, Tully Babes. Okay. I just want to go back to her um, Instagram account because this is her personal Instagram account. An actress, illustrator, YouTuber, and mom. I just want to show you um, how many followers she has. And then I want to show you how many followers her characters have. Tally Babes has 35,000 followers and a Showmax show of her own. She's also been recognized with a blue tick on Instagram, which the actual person has not. It's so, I find it so interesting. Um, and then of course, so Zal DIY has 102,000 followers um, and she costs a crap load of money <laughs> to get booked to do gigs. So there's it, guys. That's a Zal DIY joke. Cool. So in order to do what you love, you need to do two things. Know yourself intimately because this is all about you. It's not about anybody else. And trying to be like anybody else is not going to get you happy or closer to having a life that you love waking up to in the morning. The second thing that you need to do, and this one nearly broke me in half when I had to come to terms with it, is take 100% responsibility for your life. This is something that was the very first chapter in one of the first kind of like personal development books that I read called How to Get From Where You Are to Where You Want to Be. And I loved it so much, I basically bought it for all of my friends because it's amazing, you guys should get it. Mm -hmm. um, but the first chapter was take 100% responsibility for your life, which when you first think about it, sounds like something that we're all doing. But this means that we can no longer blame whoever's in our life for the reason we're not living the life that we want to live. You, can, you can't blame your mommy anymore for not realizing your artistic talent and nurturing it because you are in that, that place to now decide, I'm going to nurture it. If you are going to give credit for the negative things that happen in your life, you also need to give as much credit for all the positive things that happen in your life. 
And if you're going to blame other people for the fact that you're not living the life you want to live right now, you also place them in control of what type of life you can live. So as soon as you decide, okay, I forgive you, mommy, I forgive you, daddy, I forgive you, school friends, I forgive you, ex-husband, ex-boyfriend, ex-best friend, whoever it is, children, some people blame the fact that they have children on why they, you know, as soon as we take that power back and be like, no, this is on me, okay, I'm going to stop giving all my energy to change to other people and holding myself victim to the past, it's all on me now, it's a big, it's a big mental shift. So you at this moment in time, no matter if your mom is going to be upset with you or your partner or your boss, if you decide to quit or your kids, if you're not spending as much time with them anymore, it's up to you now to do the thing that you want to do. If there's any questions about anything that I'm going through very fast, you can ask me at the end. Okay. Okay. Then uh, just to add, this is something I shared on my Instagram account as well. The number one regret of the dying is I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Um, this is a lady who, uh, I can't remember her name, but she basically had a blog and then it became a book. Um, she cared, she was a nurse that cared for palliative uh, patients. So in the last 12 weeks of their life, she kind of cared for them and made them comfortable or whatever. And she started picking up themes in, um, they became very clear about their life, looking back as they became closer to death. And the number one regret was this, um, but the name of the book is Five Regrets of the Dying, if you want to check it out. Um, the second one, very interesting, was I wish I hadn't worked as hard. I think that's going to eat a lot of people. Um, the reason I just bring this up is because we need to think about our life in first and reverse engineer. There's another exercise that I don't have time for, which isn't part of this thing, which is basically doing a free write of the person giving the eulogy at your funeral. And if you want to talk more about that and try that, it's a powerful exercise. You can just hit me up on email or on Instagram and I'll share that with you. But just to give you an idea of where you don't want to be. Figure out what you want and then reverse engineer that. Sorry. Cool, exercise time, guys. <laughs> um, okay, so these are the instructions. The exercise is called 100 things. I jumped ahead and then went back and now we, yeah, 100 things. I know it sounds like a lot. You have 10 minutes. I'm gonna put a timer on. While we're waiting before the timer, please make a list on your piece of paper from one to 100. So just in the margin number it one to 100. Please tell me. I learned something today. A guy at the car wash told me, energy flows from where attention goes. Yes. So it was powerful and made me think. Exactly, that's Tracy. Tracy, that's so good. Please, um, did you share it in the comments? Yeah. Please copy and paste it. I want to I wanna put that in my notes. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So take your piece of paper, number it from 1 to 100. Once you've done that, or while you're actually numbering, please take a few deep breaths. I want you to be very centered in where you are right now. I want you to forget about yesterday, forget about tomorrow. This is the only, the present is the only time where things actually happen. This is the only time that we have control over. So I want you to get very in tune with yourself. Take those deep breaths. Inhale oxygen, exhale anxiety, negativity, worry, all of those things bit of a, a mindfulness exercise. Just uh, let me know in the comments uh, when you're done with your one to 100. Um, while you're busy, I'm just going to explain the reason I'm doing the 10 minutes is because I want to get past your mental sensor, your mental critic, the one who questions everything that comes from the inner you the fear in you, basically. The one that says, no, but you can't do that. What about, and what will your mom think about? And you're not good enough to, and you have no experience in. I'm sure some of you recognize that voice. It sounds like you when you eat. So when you're writing, you're not allowed to lift your pen from the paper. 
So literally, whatever comes into your mind, you have to write it down. You're not allowed to judge it. No, 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 not yet. I haven't started for 10 minutes. Oh, did you start already? Is everyone uh, finished their numbers? <laughs> okay, some, some, some people have gotten it. So it's true. Eager beavers. Uh, can I just get an indication of the people in the comments? Is everyone numbered? Okay, don't stop writing, guys. No overthinking. Anything that comes to mind must go down on the paper, okay? Um, anything you want to do, be, or have. Those are the, if you get stuck, just remember, do, be, have. If you get stuck on do, change to be, change to have. And if you still get stuck, uh, try thinking, wouldn't it be cool if? Just to like open your mind up to more possibilities. Wouldn't it be cool if I could have a more loving relationship with my sister? Yes. You're going to write a hundred things. I'm going to stop at 10 minutes. And if you haven't finished, it's fine. You can take this exercise home with you. But it is possible to fill in a hundred in 10 minutes. You just have to go. Okay. So on the count of three, two, one. You can sit anyway. Yeah. No, you can sit there. It's fine. What is your name? Nadira. Nadira. Nice to meet you. I'm out. So you're just busy doing an exercise now. If you've got paper, um, it's that exercise. You just have to number one to one. You still have started. So you have like nine, nine minutes to get in. Get into it. Say hi to Nadira. <laughs> I think she heard you, Stacey. So I'll just give you a quick overview. Um, just number from one to 100 in your margin and then just start writing things down that you wanna do, be or have. Um, and you just go, just write, keep writing. Whatever comes to mind, you just write down, don't stop writing. It's a very, uh, what is it called? Um, stream of consciousness type of exercise. So just write, write, write. Try and get as far as you can before the 10 minutes is over there still. Um, seven and a half minutes left. So even if you want to just number as you go along, that's also fine.
four minutes, 20 seconds. Feels like an exam, guys. Ooh. Tiffany, no copying at the back. If it's hard, it's an indication of when last you paid attention to what you want. That just hit some people in the stomach, I know it. Also, guys, if anybody found a mask lying around, it's mine. Found it. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I'm just going to blame it on the fact that I have a three month old at home, okay? No judges. <laughs> Go you thinking too much? Yeah, like I'm here. Well, <laughs> just start thinking about wouldn't it be cool if, and maybe things that you want to see happen in the world. It can literally be anything, guys. It doesn't have to be concrete, like I want a black pair of boots. It can be like I want more peace in my life. Like whatever it is you want to do, be, or have, anything you'd be, you, you think would be cool, write it down. These are all the things that are important to you that's been sitting at the back of your mind. Needs to come out. One minute left. Is anybody done? Nobody? Anybody online? <laughs> well done, Tracy. Oh, Stacy. Sure. This has been introspecting. That is time, guys. Put down your pins. How are you feeling? Weird. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so the reason we did that exercise is because if we're going to do the thing and realize what it is that we enjoy doing, and actually go out and do that, 
you also, there's um, something that I'm going to add at the end because there's some more work to do with ask your mother that you need to now ask your friends. Um, but I'll add that at the end. The reason we did this exercise, I would like you to go through your list, complete it at home, give yourself like another five minute time cap when you get home if it's not at 100 yet. I want it to be 100 because I want everything to come out. When you look through your list, you're gonna start seeing themes emerging. I would like you to group your themes together. So everything that has to do with money, group it together, everything that has to do with family, group it together, everything that has to do with self, like spirituality or whatever, group it together, fitness, like find your themes and kind of group them. But ultimately you need to pick the one thing on this list that is the most important thing to you. The thing that's basically going to unlock everything else and that's gonna pull you out of your comfort zone to do whatever it is you need to do to get there. For me, I did this exercise quite recently on my birthday and fitness, getting back in shape and money was like, they were fighting for first place. But what I realized was um, the finance, becoming financially free was the one that's gonna unlock everything else. Because in order for me to get into that mind, uh, that mind space of working out whatever I need to work out, I need to exercise anyway to get rid of anxiety. So it kind of unlocks that. So I'm like, this is the one that's most important to me right now. It's the one that's going to get the most um, emotion out of you. It's either going to make you really angry, really happy, whatever it is that gets the strongest uh, emotional reaction, you need to pay attention to that one. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to figure out what that one is and you kind of need to just reverse engineer. Like I did a 10 year plan for financial freedom. 10 years, five years, one year, six months, three months today. And you need to start figuring out how to get there by tying it in with whatever your gift is, okay? So there's gonna be a homework afterwards for you to get closer to what your gift is, but this is where your purpose comes in because there should be things on your list that's also outside of yourself because ultimately your gift is not to serve you. You need to find the audience that you meant to serve. And your unique experiences in life is what's going, what's going to um, inform that, what your purpose is. So everybody thinks I can't be this because there's too many of this at the moment, whether it's an influencer or fashion blogger or this, or whatever's popular, whatever it is that, that is attractive to you. There's too many of this. Your existence, like the fact that you are who you are, born to your parents when you were born, the chances of that happening is one in 400 trillion. Those are just like scientifically the odds, okay? Not one in a million, one in 400 trillion. The chance of your experiences from that point being anything like anybody else, it's like not, it's non-existent. Your experiences and what you have to offer to whatever space you wanna enter into is completely unique and that's what makes it valuable. That's why I want each of you to look inside what it is you enjoy doing and all of these things that you want out of life and your unique experiences. You need to tie all of those together and you need to give that away to whoever it is that you want to serve. That's going to be tying in your gift, what you love doing and your purpose in life. Okay. Um, and then just to give you a little bit of short um, excitement, I just want to share some of the things that has happened from my list. I started doing this list, list in 2014. At that time, Brandon, you remember, second kid, it was when I, when I just switched into fashion and I was about to figure out the writing thing, right? I was doing my blog and I made this list for the first time. Actually, that wasn't the first time, it was the second time, which was something I, I remembered to do. Made it for the second time. Let me just paint a picture of where I was. I was very broke, I was in debt, I was unemployed because now I've taken a, a, a little a gap from work, I had a little bit of savings, found that I was pregnant. I was like, damn it, <laughs> there goes my savings. And uh, basically I had to speed up whatever it is I, I want to figure out. So in debt, wasn't paying stuff. Like when I say in debt, I mean the debt collector came to my door. Luckily it was for my husband's car and he didn't realize I was also on his list because we were like, it's the same guy that called both of us from MFC. I was so, I'm like, no, he's not here. I don't know when he's going to be back. I was just so happy he didn't know it was me. Like, I did not make that connection because my car was there. And if, he, if he'd known it was, anyway, that's just where I was, guys. On my list um, at that time was 
I wanted to travel internationally. I didn't have a passport at the time. And I also wanted a house with a pool. So just picture where I am, guys. I am broke, yeah. unemployed, um, debt collectors at the door calling me from MFC, being handed over. Um, and I don't have a passport, that was our thing. I've never been anywhere. Within two years, I looked at that list and those big goals had come to pass. I had bought, I didn't think about this. It's not something like, oh, oh I like that house because there's a pool in my list. We just happened to find a house that had a pool. And when I looked at the specifics on my list, I was like, shit, I'm allowed to say shit, Stacey. <laughs> I was like, shit, man, you know? The other thing was I'd been to two countries, um, Hong Kong and New York. Also not planned. It just happened through my husband's, my ex-husband's work at the time, you know? If you write things down, I don't know the stats for this, but it is significantly more likely to happen than if you just think it in your head because you've committed it to paper and your, subcon your subconscious starts working on it without you even realizing it. So that's just an idea of list things. Oh, and on my very first list, I wrote um, watch a Broadway show in New York. I'm talking about when I was like, when Mason, my son was born, I was probably like 22, 23. Also did that in New York, didn't realize it only out this year, I looked back at it and I was like, what the heck? Anyway, so that's, those are my examples, some examples guys, that's, that was that slide. Okay, so Q&A, we've got a few minutes left. Shoo, two minutes, but I'm gonna make it five. I'm gonna squeeze in more, I know we started late, um, but I, I put my email here as well. So if there's anything else that you want to ask me, please email me. Like. I just want to help guys. I'm very excited about this. I want people to be excited about what they do for a living because when you are, you're going to impact the most people. Like ultimately what I want to do is I want people to get on their creative journeys and become change makers, like world change makers. Cool. So if it's important enough to you, you'll make the time. If not, you'll make an excuse. Questions. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cool, Robin. I just want to share that um, I have left my hand in the first place I stayed and sat afterwards. I was just so excited to see the board, like at the National Museum. Yeah. And I was also like, I'm just really like, I wanted to understand why I went to have a celestial plan and I ended up making a book. And I just put it on the wall. Well done. Yeah. I've made a list like that before. Um, I just want to know from the people online, were you able to hear those two comments? No, um, they said they couldn't hear them. Okay, so Thalia said, well done. Thank you again, Thalia. And Robin just shared that she left her marriage a few years ago and, and put affirmations up where she was staying. And one of those uh, lists that she made was of the type of man that she wants to meet. And she has met such men and is quite happy now. You can't see her, but she looks like she's glowing. That's awesome. She said the sex is really good, guys. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was on the list. Sure. Yes. Good question. Um, so, so for everyone that's online, of course, just asked how did I transition? from the career or careers that I was in prior to becoming a journalist and digital editor, um, because in the marketing uh, that we did for this event, I did mention that I became a journalist with no formal writing experience and no, um, quali no formal qualification, because uh, my qualification obviously was in art direction and design, which has nothing to do with writing. Um, so basically what I did was, as soon as I had figured out um, that I had a gift for writing and that it was something that I did every day in any case. Like, if you know me, I am a, 
I take notes all the time. Like it's compulsive. Like you can see notebook, notebook. You think, no, it's not, I'm not done. Now the notebook, okay. Mm -hmm. This is just something that I've always done. I've always kept a diary, even after my mother. I read it three times. Oh, that's my baby. Damn it, guys, time's up. Okay, I'm gonna get it, I'm get it in quickly. Oh, shame, man, oh, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna go fetch him. I'm gonna fetch him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, everyone online, I'm gonna go fetch my baby. <laughs> Guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer Rivka's question in either email format or chat, depending on what contact details Stacey has. And then just, if you can just put my email up again, if there are any other questions, you can just ask me, I'm open to helping. Thanks guys. Yeah, Stacey can chat while I go breastfeed. Thank you, Melissa. Am I on the screen now? I can't see myself. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, guys. I'm so like chuffed that we had our first face to face workshop. Like, this is such a milestone for Skills Exchange, and especially because we have um, new members potentially <laughs> in the audience. So, if you do want to become a member of Skills Exchange, I can send you the link um, to become a member, and you can attend more workshops like these today. Um, yeah, and thank you to Melissa. That was, I think, what most of us needed, um, even though like, I feel like I found my purpose somewhat, I'm like, I think there's so many different angles and shapes that your purpose can, can take form of. And as you evolve as a, as, a, as a woman, like, you know, you just have to be conscious of that. Um, and yeah, like this is just a, a stepping stone to my kind of purpose, skills exchange that is. And I'm looking forward to watching everybody else's journey in this. You know, it's, it's super exciting. I'm always telling Joanne, like, it's, it's, it's a team effort, and it definitely is. Like, I just, I'm so focused on watching other women grow, and um, that's what just makes me happy, you know, like, on a day-to-day -day basis. So thanks again for making the time for yourself and for us, because that's what we're about. Thank you. That's all I have to say. <laughs>